Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to well, this is a reaction to a video named Kepler Telescope Found New Planets Better Than Earth. And I just saw this popping up. I had a few suggestions because I've been doing a lot more space reactions recently and I had a few suggestions. But I did just see this pop up and I actually thought, okay, this sounds quite interesting. It's a new new video. It was out just over a week ago as well, so it's current day, I guess you could say, but that rhymes. Hey, come on, spit bars. But yeah, I searched up about it because I don't know much about Kepler Telescope. Again, I've heard of it. It's one of those things that I just know about, but I like the names I've known about, but I don't actually know what it is and stuff. But I've read about it and there's just like a space telescope that was launched by NASA and it sort of discovered like planets around suns and I don't know if it was in other solar systems, well it must be in other solar systems, but I don't know where, how far it's gone and stuff like that. Orbit height, 151. I can't even say that number. <laughs> Speed and orbit, 5,892 kilometers per second. God damn. Planned 3.5 years, final nine years, seven months, 23 days. Cost 550 million US dollars. God damn. But yeah, I don't really know what to expect from this. I'm interested to see this video and the, the perspectives of what it's going to say though. But yeah, hopefully you're going to enjoy. Quick shout out to my Instagram, my Twitter. Links for the um, descriptions, li links in the description for those interested in following either socials. Save my Patreon. Links are all there. I'm starting to get a bit more active on there. Come the 15th of um, what month is it? May. No, <laughs> May, March. It's March, right? Is it April? March, it is March. <laughs> it's March. Oh my God, I'm so stupid. Um, 15th of March, I should have my Wi-Fi sorted. So not too long now, just two weeks, which is still quite long actually. But let's get into this. Let's check this out and see what this video has to say. The Kepler telescope was built for one purpose to look at a certain patch in the Milky Way in search of exoplanets. The exoplanet hunter observed Just over hundreds of thousands of stars and discovered thousands of exoplanets during its lifetime. <clears throat> Launched in 2009 as part of NASA's discovery program, Kepler's job was to constantly scan a fixed patch of sky within our Milky Way galaxy to oh, find no planetary no. systems. Oh, wow. At the time of the launch, it had the largest primary mirror ever sent into space, and it also had a 96 megapixel camera to process the light. Astronomers were interested in finding out just how many stars have planets orbiting around them and how many of these extrasolar planets or exoplanets have conditions that are suitable for life to develop. In its nine years in space, Kepler observed 530,536 stars Jesus. and confirmed the existence of 2,662 new exoplanets. These exoplanets are unlike anything we've ever seen in our solar system before. Most of them are significantly bigger than Earth and orbiting so close to their stars that they complete one revolution every several days. And there are some very strange worlds. Some have star-facing sides with temperatures that can melt iron and have I just find entire it crazy, man. How can a telescope discover all this stuff? I just don't understand. I know I always say go for the same um, just mental breakdowns every single video. I just have a breakdown and just mentally I'm just gone when I see these types of videos, but how does a telescope, again, I know the powers of it is so, so powerful, but how can a telescope be that, like, just, it can find out, find out those different things, or it can see, it, it can see, like, it will have a picture of the planet, and then the scientists will be able to study from that pi the pictures, and be able to deter be able to determine things about it. It's just crazy. Spheres bro. covered with oceans of liquid molten rock. Other exoplanets the size of Jupiter orbit not one but two stars. If you're standing on the surface of one of these planets, you'd be able to see a binary sunset. Oh my days. But Kepler's legacy is that it successfully found Earth-sized worlds orbiting at a safe distance from their host stars inside what's known as a habitable zone or Goldilocks zone. This is where the temperatures are warm enough for water to condense on their surfaces, but not so cold that it will just freeze up entirely. Although being in this zone doesn't guarantee the existence of life, the presence of water is significant and the foundation of life as we know it. One such exoplanet discovered by Kepler that has recently generated excitement among researchers is called K218b. In okay. September 2019... Again, yeah, why is it named this? Give it a cool name like... <laughs> I don't actually know a cool name. Um, 
What's a cool name? I don't actually know. I can't think of a name. Johnny. And two scientific teams independently Johnny. announced that they found signs of liquid water in the planet's atmosphere. Situated 124 light years away from Earth, oh K218b is about eight times the mass of Earth and three times as big. It orbits a main sequence red dwarf star called K218. A red dwarf star is the smallest, coolest star, and by far the most common type of star in the Milky Way. According to Kepler's data, astronomers estimate that 6% of red dwarf stars have an Earth-sized planet in the Goldilocks zone, at least in our neighborhood. To find water on the surface of one such planet is a landmark discovery in the search for potentially habitable alien worlds. K218b is also the first planet with water out of all of the exoplanets discovered by Kepler in the habitable zone of stars. Kepler first discovered the planet in 2015, and since then its composition has been studied using other telescopes, like the Spitzer and Hubble Space Telescope. Kepler mainly used what's known as the transit method for exoplanet hunting. It essentially means that if a planet passes in front of a star, the light from the star dims slightly. And that's how we can tell that there's a planet there. The level of dimming and how long it lasts gives us important information about the size and orbit of the planet. However, detecting the transit of an extrasolar planet is very challenging. For example, the diameter of Earth is only 1 109th of that of the Sun. So, for an outside observer of the solar system, the passage of Earth would dim the output of the Sun by only 0.008%. Kepler's cameras had to be sensitive enough to detect this minute change in the luminosity. Jeez, Using the same method way back in 2014, Kepler first found a potentially habitable exoplanet. Kepler 186f ignited the imaginations of space nerds everywhere when NASA announced its discovery. Now a new study indicates the exoplanet, 500 light years away, may also have seasons and a climate similar to our own. New research out of Georgia Tech University has analyzed the planet's spin and axial tilt and found that its tilt is stable like Earth's, which makes it likely that Kepler 186f also has regular seasons and a stable climate. Similar research on the massive Kepler database is going on in research universities all across the world. In fact, in recent years, previous Kepler findings that were rejected as potential Earth-sized exoplanets due to algorithmic error are getting rediscovered. These false positives are now slowly being reanalyzed in conjunction with data from other telescopes. One such planet is Kepler 1649c. In mid-2020, while combing through old Kepler data and matching it against new data from the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS, astronomers confirmed the existence of another exoplanet with very favorable conditions for life. Kepler 1649c, located 300 light years from Earth, is very similar to Earth in size and estimated temperature. This newly revealed world is only 1.06 times larger than our own planet. Also, the amount of starlight it receives from its host star, which is also a red dwarf, is 75% of the amount of light Earth receives from our Sun, meaning the exoplanet's temperature may be similar to our planet's as well. Kepler 1649c provides yet How another example of an Earth-sized planet in the habitable zone of a red dwarf star. But, um, again, it's, he's probably already described it, but I still don't understand how. How can they find out this kind of stuff from... It's just... Bro, humans are mental, bro. I say humans. Some humans are just crazy. How smart some humans are. How they can know this kind of stuff. Again, maybe I'm just stupid. Actually, in fact, I am just stupid, but still... It doesn't change the facts of how just mental Our sun, is. meaning the exoplanet's temperature may be similar to our planet's as well. Kepler 1649c provides yet another example of an Earth-sized planet in the habitable zone of a red dwarf star. But before we get ahead of ourselves, it's important to note that out of the 2,662 exoplanets identified by Kepler, only 16 of them lie inside the Goldilocks zone. And out of these 16, some of these planets are tidally locked with their parent stars meaning that only one hemisphere of the planet faces the star, and this oh, wow. is not ideal for life. Others are more like a smaller version of Neptune than a larger version of Earth, and planets similar to Neptune are expected to have a significant envelope of hydrogen surrounding any layer of water on the surface with a planetary core of rock and iron. If the hydrogen envelope is too thick, the temperature and pressure of the water layer beneath would be far too great to support life. 
On top of all of this, despite being cooler, red dwarf stars tend to be more active than sun-like stars. Thus, the planets may be exposed to higher quantities of damaging ultraviolet radiation than what we're used to here on Earth. Because of this, surface temperatures can range between minus 100 and 116 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 73 to 47 degrees Celsius. That means the surface could, on average, be colder than Antarctica or hotter than Earth's most blistering deserts. Unfortunately, we just don't have the technological know-how to study the composition and atmospheres of these alien worlds and comprehensively answer all these questions yet. But don't despair. Based on the statistical analysis of all the Kepler observations, astronomers now estimate that one in five stars like the Sun have planets about the size of Earth and a surface temperature conducive to life. Given that about 20% of stars are sun-like in our galaxy, that amounts to several billions of potential, habitable, Earth-like planets just in our Milky Way alone. Crazy Kepler word. not only focused its efforts in finding potentially habitable planets, in fact, the bulk of its discoveries were strange worlds not suitable for life, but fascinating nonetheless. Like the gas giants. Planets compose mostly of gases such as hydrogen and helium with a relatively small rocky core also known as hot Jupiters. These planets orbit extremely close to their parent stars and are abundant in Kepler's data. One such fascinating example of a gas giant is Koi 5ab. Astronomers first flagged Koi 5ab as a potential planet way back in 2009. At the time, this elusive alien world was only the second planet ever found by Kepler. It slipped through the cracks a decade ago. Firstly, due to the enormous amount of data that Kepler generated, and secondly, because astronomers noticed that the main Koi 5a star had another companion star, making analysis very difficult for them. Jeez, Indeed, the Koi 5 system was even more complicated than researchers realized at the time. By 2014, scientists had determined that the Koi 5 system actually harbors three stars, and it still wasn't clear if the planet Koi 5ab actually existed or if the 2009 signal was generated by one of the companion stars. But thanks to additional data from the test satellite, scientists were able to confirm the existence of Koi 5ab. Planetary bodies on stable orbits in a multi-star system is quite a rare find, and the discovery of Koi 5ab is expected to add a lot to our understanding of planetary formation. Other exoplanet types identified by Kepler include super-Earths, they're more massive than Earth, yet lighter than ice giants like Neptune and Uranus, and can be made of gas, rock, or a combination of both. Lava planets, a super dense, larger than Earth worlds in close, hot orbits around their parent stars. Some of them, known as Chthonian planets, are likely the remnant cores of evaporated hot Jupiters. And finally, Trojan planets, planets of various size found in strange locations, and sometimes even as companions to larger planets though none have been certainly identified yet. Kepler was finally retired on the 30th of October 2018 as it ran out of fuel. Had fuel for that long. The telescope was deactivated with a good night command sent from mission control the next month. Coincidentally, Kepler's retirement fell on the 338th anniversary of Johann Kepler's death, after whom it's named. Although not operational yeah. anymore, these incredible discoveries predict a near future in which astronomers will use new and advanced telescopes on the ground and in space to more deeply understand Kepler's numerous finds. One such telescope is already slated to go up into space in 2021. The James Webb Telescope will take a much closer look at some of these Kepler objects of interest and hopefully will bring us closer to answering the question, are we alone in the universe? What do you think? Mate, Will astronomers find many so more much. strange worlds buried inside Kepler's so data? Much. Let us know in the comments section below. They just make you think, man. They really do. I, I can never get bored of space, man. It's just there's so much to know and just so much to want to still learn. And there is so much to learn and just so much of everythingness. It's just, it just goes on and goes on, bro. I love learning these videos and just watching, sorry, learning about these videos and watching these types of ones. This video makes just, this video just makes me realize how insane it is that us humans exist. Humans landing on other planet, planets, creatures, your aliens attacking us. <laughs> That's actually true though. Like we would see it as aliens attacking us, but then we're the aliens attacking them. It's just a weird concept. Meanwhile, on that planet, our planet seeking device found on a planet worse than us. Imagine your parents saying, "Don't longer than the one sunrise." See you again in five years when YouTube recommends this to me again. 
this is nothing that's discovered. I've got an extra pocket in my blazer jacket I've had for 10 years. I felt like my entire life has been a lie. <laughs> God, that is different, bro. That is crazy. Scientists, it hasn't, it, it, it even has oil, USA dips. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, I mean, we can find a whole solar system like Earth's, Earth like planets, but it's all useless because of two things time and distance. Imagine traveling 500 light years to set on a planet with, an ama with amazing conditions and intelli intelligent life that thinks we taste good of ketchup. <laughs> Video title, new planet's a bit better than Earth. Actually, video, the planet might be like Earth, but they might not might not be. We don't know. Their red dwarf stars also might be a problem. Still, though, it's an interesting video, and I love this kind of stuff, man. But, yeah, let me know some more videos like this that you want me to see. What are your thoughts on this? Do you know more about this topic than maybe the video described? And, yeah, just please talk in the comments about this video and the reactions. But, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this, and until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.